Kindergarten, it's Miss Lee again. Today we're gonna finish the book, The Magratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. Yesterday we talked about the physical characteristics of Velma. We know that Velma's a girl. We know that she is wearing a green and blue striped shirt. We know that she has red hair and she likes to wear pigtails. We know that she has blue eyes and wears glasses. These are all of Velma's physical characteristics. Today, we're going to learn more about her inner characteristics. And that means how she feels, how she acts, how she treats people, and some of the different emotions that she might have. We also know that in this story, Velma started to make bad choices because she wanted to be recognized and she wanted to get attention. That's not the way to get attention, right? At the end of the story, we learned how much Velma loves science. And so now we're gonna read about how Velma loves science and learns all about butterflies. Does anybody remember the word metamorphosis? Metamorphosis is when a butterfly turns from an egg into a beautiful butterfly. I wonder if you could look that up on YouTube or look that up on the internet. Give it a try. All right, let's read more about Velma. In science, Mr. Plexippus announced that they would take a trip to a butterfly conservatory. A conservatory is a place where butterflies co are collected and cared for. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked home. Conservatory. Conservatory. Conservatory, she said. Frida, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked. Absolutely, we went to the museum, Frida said. Fiona, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked. Absolutely, we went to the aquarium. Fiona stated, well, said Velma proudly, we're going to the can, can, can serve a story, can serve the story. That's way cool, Frida said, and Fiona bobbled her head. Yeah, way cool. The butterfly conservatory was surrounded by fancy flower beds and bedecked with banners of butterflies. Thelma was so excited, her knobbly knees wobbled, her spaghetti arms trembled, and her carroty, carroty curls shook. A sharp-nosed woman holding a clipboard introduced herself. I am your tour guide, she said. And inside, we're gonna go see a butterfly land. When we're in there, a butterfly might land on you. But please do not touch the wings. Does anyone know why? Mm -mm. Thelma's hand shut up. Velma's hand shut up because, because they're made of tiny, teeny little scales that could rub off like dust. And that is not good, she explained. Precisely, said the guide. What's your name? I'm Velma Gratch, the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Hmm, I, I don't think I know your sisters, said the guide as she commented and they entered the rainforest room. Butterflies, look at Velma. She's so excited, wait, excited, eager. Those sound like words that can describe her and describe how she feels and how she acts. It was a magical space, slathered in all tall trees and tangled with vines. Water gurgled over rocks and butterflies of every variety. Giant shallow tails, short tailed skippers, pygmy blues and best of all monarchs. They flew up to forever. The guide explained that when it got colder in a couple of weeks, she would take the monarchs into the park and let them go free so that they could fly to Mexico. This traveling was called migration. Because Velma didn't want to forget this, she kept saying it, migration, migration, migration. A gorgeous green comma rested on Randy's head and the class ooed. The baby brown elfin settled on Sandy's nose and the class ooed, odd. And a big blue morpho aligned on Andy's shoulder. The class gasped. But not one single butterfly landed on any part of Velma. Time to leave, said Mr. Plaxippus as they neared the exit. A tear formed in a distant corner of Velma's eyes. All she wanted was one single touch of a butterfly. On a nearby branch sat a most lovely monarch. Oh, how she wanted to pet the lovely wings. The class was leaving one more inch. It was so pretty, she froze as if it touched its wings. Velma couldn't do it. She didn't ever want to hurt a butterfly. Come on now, Velma, we have to go. Sadly, Velma turned away 
And at that very moment, the most marvelous thing happened. Oh, look at her. The monarch hopped from its branch and right on Velma's finger. The delicate wings folded, the antenna twitched, and the weightless, wondrous insect sat. Velma was in heaven. Look how happy she is. Happy is a word to describe how she feels. The bus is waiting, her teacher called. Velma placed her finger next to the branch. Bye-bye, butterfly, she whispered, but the monarch didn't move. We're closing, said the guide. Velma lightly blew on the butterfly, it didn't budge. Without ever touching the butterfly's wings, everyone tried to get the monarch to fly, crawl, and get off Velma's finger, but nothing worked. At last, Velma was told to leave with the butterfly still on her finger. It stayed on the bus. Oh, isn't that cool? It's on the bus with her and all the kids are so excited. Look at Velma. It stayed there while she slept and where she woke up. It stayed there during gym, math, reading, ballet, soccer. Day in and day out, it stayed I put on the pointer. Soon everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal knew about Velma and her butterfly. Mr. Plexippus lamented that Velma was positively the first scratch ever to set to the principal's office twice. This was an oversized frown on Velma's face. Velma! Principal Crosley commanded. It's time for the butterfly to go. I tried to get it to go, Velma, but it just won't. Well, no one will ever forget this, the principal fumed. Velma's frown pencil twisted into a smile. Huh? Hey, I know what to do, she said. My gray son, my gray son. Velma paraded Principal Crosley, Mr. Plexippus, her class, Frida and Fiona to the park. Cars, horns honked, people yelled, but despite the commotion, the monarch did not move. A cool wind from the west blew through the field. In the middle stood the tour guide from the conservatory, carefully opening an enormous sack. A single monarch butterfly stepped out, looked around and flittered away. It was trailed by 10, then 10 more, then soaring up in the sky, overflowed with thick clouds of black and orange. What's happening, wondered Fred, Fr Frida. Why are you letting them go, said Fiona. Migration, said the guide. My gray son, said Velma. Velma's so funny. The wind tossed Velma's hair and tickled her butterfly wings. The monarch jumped into her nose, onto her nose, as if it, to give her a kiss. And then it took flight to join its friends. Over the treetops it flew, over the skyscrapers, and up in the wild blue, orange and black yonder, on its way to Mexico. Velma, shouted Principal Crosley, and every eye turned toward her. Oh no, fretted Velma. I'm sure to be the only Gratch sister that's ever been sent to the principal's office three times. That was way cool, said the principal. And one and all, they bobbled their heads in a way cool agreement. Then, with her fine finger where the monarch had still sat, Velma, followed by her two sisters, floated home. The end. Did you guys like that story? I did. How did Velma feel? How did Velma act? How did Velma feel before she found the butterfly? And how did she feel after? Talk about this or write about it with your family member. All right, guys, have a great day. And don't forget, always do your best. Bye.